Hello, and welcome to Gehenna Gaming, where we tell dark stories and support inclusivity in tabletop gaming. Welcome to episode two of Mast of Nyarlathotep, our seventh edition Call of Cthulhu cinematic actual play adventure, where we pick up pretty much promptly where we left off in episode one, where our uh, intrepid investigators and their newfound friend Jackson Elias will be fleeing from the scene of a crime. Although, is it really a crime if it's a monster that you killed? We don't have uh, time for ethics. <laughs> uh, before I thank our wonderful sponsors and we get started, let's go around and introduce our investigators. Hello, everyone. It's me again, Rhea Sunshine, and I'm still playing Love Livru. Hello. It is once again Salem Sharp, and I am still also playing Dr. Oliver West. Do we all have to say that we're still doing it? No. <laughs> no, no I'm just we like were just a trade I was going to play somebody else point. this time. I know, we might be <laughs> stupid. <laughs> okay, I'm still playing Adrian Beaumont, but instead of being Olufemi, I'm going to go by Chuck Weaselton. <laughs> That's my actual... <laughs> I'm Femi, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Femi. I'm Sharon Paris, and I'm playing Ophelia Click. My name is Tyler Sutherland, playing Nicholas Porter. Once again, thank you to our wonderful sponsors, Eldritch Foundry, Norse Foundry, the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society, and Infinite Black. And of course, thank you to Chaosium for producing this game. Uh, today, we are giving away not only a $50 gift card to Eldritch Foundry, we are also giving away a set of dice from Norse Foundry. Uh, so make sure you check chat for the rules and use those hashtags to enter our giveaways. You can enter for the gi gift card. You can enter for a set of dice from Norse Foundry or both if you want. They're really nice dice. They are really nice they're dice. Uh, yeah, we really can really confirm. Uh, although the, the D6s do like to roll fives. Um, I don't know. They rolled real low for the last two. So make sure you stick around to the end where we will uh, reveal those winners and... Without further ado, let's uh, continue on with our story. Where last we left our investigators, you were fleeing the, hosp the hospital, uh, the museum <laughs> and the university uh, away from where you had just killed D. Mendoza. <laughs> hey, he took a dead. broomstick through the neck. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Proved that we I did that. I don't trust you. <laughs> anyway, uh, where would you like to go from here? You, uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, did you flee through the window or did you go out the front door? Let's go through the window. Yeah. I don't trust the front door. There are cops there. He's going out the window. I'd like to go through the front door. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, there's sirens, so let's go through the window. Yeah, there are police sirens coming. But we're on the second floor, isn't no. that right? No, you're on the first floor. You came up from the basement oh, to the first yeah. floor. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> As you go through the window, Oliver just takes you to the back of your collar and is like, no, 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 no. So, Money can't solve this one. So you head out the window, uh, across the back lawn of the building, into the university grounds. Now, as I had mentioned before, the rest of the university like was built mostly in like the 1500s. Mm -hmm. It is an old, well-established institution. Some of the buildings are probably that old, um, but some of them are newer. Not not quite as new as the one that you are in, but newer. And you are easily able to get away. Like this is not like cops surrounding the building. Someone reported maybe they heard gunshots. Like mm -hmm. uh, one cop car is pulling up at the front door. You're able to sprint away and go around the building, and you're pretty sure you've already lost them. Let's be honest here. Cool. Um, Nicholas, may I have my shoes? Yes, of course. Um, I had to collect myself for a second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How's everyone feeling? Not, um, not, um, not, um, Great. Great's the word. Great. Not, 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 not great. great. Not great. Mm -hmm. That um, um, was something. So what the fuck was that? Uh, uh, Jackson Elias speaks up. Clearly some sort of 
unfortunate deformity or maybe intentional surgical change? I've... I'm, I don't mean to um actually this, but I have never seen a surgical change that retains that well, much m- muscle tr- Oh, control. trust me. I have seen some very strange things with some of the cults that I have uh, How do you add more teeth, though? Painfully. And, like, the whole face being a mouth. Vibes, like the big. Man. I mean, I didn't. I didn't get a good look. Oh. I'm, I'm sure there's an answer. There's some sort of explanation for uh. this, though. Yes. Mm. You're a doctor. Sure, surely you've seen elective surgery before. Yeah, I've seen elective surgery, but nothing like that. I am. Um, again, the ones that I've seen have been fixing deformities, mm. fixing uh, um, collapsed airways, letting people breathe better um but that was different there was a fluidity to it that wouldn't have come with surgery it Mm. it it seemed natural for it to move that way well personally after dealing with something like that i like a stiff drink i don't know about the rest of you yeah i think i'll join you are you okay i'm fine Okay. A little rattled. Okay. You know, not not every day you see someone with a broomstick <clears throat> through their neck, but, hmm. you know. Jackson, other than the professor, who do you know that we could talk to discreetly about a certain note that Trinidad had transcribed? Uh, she transcribed a note. A what? It had his name... That monster, it, from a note from the 1500s, mentioned him by name. Hmm. Are you sure it wasn't just like another De Mendoza, like another? I mean, can I see it? Sure. So, I physically have the note, but who? In the, let's pretend I. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia? Yeah, oh, it, it yeah. got it got handed around a little yes. bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice yeah, and, and you hand it to him. You don't have to actually hand it to me. <laughs> and he looks at it. He's like, "Oh, it's in Spanish." Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, according to the text, Figuero set out to seek his own. Who's, oh, Gaspar Figuero. Okay, seek his own fortune following Pizarro's assassination in 1541. Mm. He was accompanied by Hernando Ruiz, Diego Garrido, Luis de Mendoza, okay, and Pedro de Velasco, fellow conquistadors who had served with Pizarro. They traveled into the southern highlands of the Andes, looking for treasure, hoping to make their fortunes before heading back to Spain and retiring in luxury. Mm -hmm. Hearing rumors of an ancient temple filled with gold, the men set off into the mountains southwest of Lake Titicaca. There they found a pyramid surrounded by a maze-like structure of underground tunnels. Okay. The men, uh, the walls of the tunnel were inlaid with intricate gold carvings. The men pried out a large section of the gold, exhausting themselves in the attempt. That night, as they rested, an evil sickness befell Figuero's companions... In the morning, and so, uh, in the morning light, they looked gaunt and death-like. Interest. I mean, I would probably describe De Mendoza as that. Uh, complaining of agonizing hunger, they pursued Figuero. De Mendoza caught up with him and started to devour him like a human. Le- no, that can't. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I, mean, I can't be translating that right. Was it leech? Was that what you were going to say? Started to devour him like a human leech. Yeah, I guess. I can confirm that as a person who was almost devoured by such le- leech. Hmm. Right there, there, there's, there's more. There's more. Sorry. Um, Figuero shot his friend in the head and fled. Okay, so obviously he's dead. And fled, pausing only to snatch up as much of the gold as he could carry. Okay. Figuero eventually arrived back in Lima, hoping to get passage home, but he was too weakened by his ordeal. Figuero describes himself as wasted, little more than a walking corpse. Oof. Um, I read final confessions as Figuero's 
attempt to lift the guilt that his avarice had placed upon him. He believed that his fate and that of his companions was brought about by their desecration of a holy place, and his most fervent wish was that he could undo the damage he had inflicted. He describes how he can still hear his friends' voices crying out with inhuman hunger, how in the dark of night he can hear other voice, hear another voice, ancient and seductive, promising him eternal life if he returns to the temple. The voice told Figuero how to contact it, but it seems Figuero was too afraid to ever attempt this. Um... Oh, and this is a note from whoever wrote this. A postscript written by the priest who performed the last rites states that Figuero died a day after completing his final confessions. His last words were an entreaty to whatever gods were listening to forgive him his blasphemies. Um, then he hands the note back to you. The gold. Lazarus, uh, Larkin has it. I mean, Larkin has a lot of gold. Yeah. We don't know if it's this gold specifically. But, I mean, would it humor me and assume that this is real for all two seconds? Sure, sure, sure. If this was one of your books mm-hmm. and the protagonist was faced with this dilemma, wouldn't you think that putting mm-hmm. the gold back where they found it would undo things? Oh, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Doctor. My works, are, my books are nonfiction. We found I said, gold. humor me for well, no, no, five I, I, seconds. They, they don't have protagonists. Well, all right, you know, fine. Yeah. Then pretend you wrote fantasy. Let's do nonfiction. Sure, sure. Or let's do fiction. Um, that seems like the plot of a story. Sure, it's, it's like the, those pulp novels that uh, you mentioned that you enjoy. Yeah. Adrian. It's similar. It, it, yes. it seems like a perfect fit. And sure, sure. It... But, uh, so, okay, so humoring... Humoring, what this is the same D Mendoza, or was the same D Mendoza, mm. who. But if a shot in the head didn't kill him, right? I mean, I, I'm a, okay. Let's say realistically, descendant yeah. inherited. You know, this death cult could go back to the 1500s, and. This demon, Do- Luis de Mendoza, is a great, 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 great grandchild, whom is now deceased. And actually, you know, um, speaking of, where's Larkin? I was just wondering that you wanted to go check out their hotel, presumably in the evening when it's lower. Oh. Profile, just, but we could go. And... I'm just saying he pulls a hotel key out of his pocket. I'm just saying that Men- D. Mendoza doesn't need this anymore. Damn, when did you when did you swipe that? When I came down the stairs and looked at the body. Shit. And helped Sanchez move it into a... I just, I, such... that's, there's no judgment. Listen, that's impressive. I, some I judgment. have got had to get out of some sticky situations before. You learn a few tricks. Oh, me too. Saying. Cheers. What if we go get that drink because I see a few faces that need one mm-hmm. and then we go to Hotel Espana and a little bit later and mm. see what's in D. Mendoza's room. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay. Let's cool. sit down for a little bit. <laughs> um, very unfortunate about Trinidad, though. She was a very nice girl. I did meet her. That's you said that she he got to her before you got there. It yes, <laughs> she was deceased before I got I got to her. That's a shame. That's a shame. Did you? I hate to be crass, but did you, did you find anything other than the the note? She, uh, uh, Professor Sanchez said she was looking for uh, anything like what, like an artifact or something. She had gold near. Some of the gold. Did you did you grab it? No, that wasn't our first instinct. If I remember correctly, Adrian, you did grab it. No, are you did. keeping that to yourself currently? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. That way, I, I wanted to clarify. <laughs> um, okay. No, I, I, I was. That was pure curiosity. Mm-hmm. I, like I said, no, not meaning to be crass here. Um, how how are 
the rest of you feeling? Not great. Mm-mm. We're we're shaken. I think is probably a way to describe it. Uh, you know, we discussed the, the the research that you've done, the things that men are doing in the name of, of great great evil. But I, I'll tell you this: no human thing did to that girl what happened to her. He doesn't argue with you. You, mm-hmm. if anyone who's re- really looking at him, he doesn't believe you. And that's just that's just his nature. He's que- he questions things. Yeah. But he's certainly not going to argue with you in the moment because he is wanting to help. While we've been standing here, can I go ahead and like just quietly reload the Derringer and oh, yeah. put it away? Absolutely. <laughs> um. So that bar we were at last night, or hotel bar, what? what? Is there another bar that you like? I think oh. we should pick a different place. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, there's there's a bar in our hotel we can swing to. Or there's, uh, you know, I know some really good water and holes around here. They might be a little beneath some people's standards, but I like them. Who's? I like them. Some. Not, 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 not yours. Okay. Not yours. Not No, no, no. Uh, he, he leads you to a more local bar where they just basically, they're like, they don't. Ask you what you want. They serve you Caprina's <laughs> rum. Rubbing alcohol. No, no. It's really good rum. Ooh, but sure, it's, good. they don't ask. They just serve. Mm-hmm. They, and you, you get rum, water, maybe like a uh, mojito type, uh, you know, mint and rum and uh, fruit juice type drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, I'm going to excuse myself to the little boys' room, say this this drink is just going right through me, um, and go up to the bar surreptitiously uh, and hand the bartender a big bill mm-hmm. and um, a handkerchief with gold in it, <laughs> with the gold that we found, uh, and I'm going to ask him to hold on to it for me. I will say the um, section of gold you found is like this long. Oh. Mm. Oh, thanks. So yeah, you you had it like under your jacket, like tucked in your waistband type oh, thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'd still like to try to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead and roll a stealth roll for me. Yeah. Um, just to do, just, you know, to or mm, sleight of hand type. Yeah. No. <laughs> no yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Just to do it without the rest of your party noticing. Sure. That is an eleven on twenty. I mean, I'm I'm unskilled. <laughs> yeah, no, that's still that's that still passes. Um, you very quietly slide it across the bar, and a large bill and hints of a promise of another large bill when you come back for it, so that he doesn't pawn it because mm-hmm. it is worth a lot of money. He just nods and slides it under the bar. Okay. Um, and these guys are all. At the table, who who do I trust of all of these people? Um, <laughs> it's just a oh, why not? You know, uh, as I'm coming back, I'll I'll catch Love's attention and and sort of do do one of those back to the bar just to give her enough time to see see what just transpired. Oh, uh, like see him just be like yeah. <laughs> you see a glint of gold. Hmm. As you go, I don't stand up, but my eyes do follow Love. No, oh, didn't I didn't get stand up. up. Oh, just as I'm coming back yeah, to the table, like I, I meet eyes mm-hmm. with her and kind of do one of these looking askance to, to the bar, giving her a chance to see just enough of the energy. And you notice, uh, love picks up your message, but for, in your head, it's hard to tell if she actually registered anything that you just said. <laughs> but she does look at the bar and go, hmm, <laughs> and then just kind of wander her eyes around the bar. Yeah. Um. While all of that is transpiring, Jackson actually uh, looks to you and says, uh, Miss Click, uh, so you're, you're more familiar with a lot of these things. Yeah. Have you read anything about this area, these creatures, that these, the, 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 you know, the stories? I have. Uh, so that thing that we saw, I think it was a... Fuck, how do you say this? Car- 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 Siri. Kara Siri. A Kara Siri. Uh, okay. Yeah, and and the, I, I think uh, Professor Sanchez mentioned that word. Yeah. Um, 
in my readings, they are they populate this area, uh, especially if you go into their um, into those caves and take their gold. Hmm. Interesting. Or the okay. locals' gold. Interesting. Okay. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, I do know that uh, I don't know if y'all noticed. I did a little bit of digging around with those two artifacts that Larkin has. They are from distinctly different time periods. Mm. I don't know what the deal is with that, but I am curious. It could be a collection. Presuming with the theory, of course, that these are monsters that have gained some sort of eternal life based off of that note. Sure, sure, sure. It'd be relatively simple if you were immortal to collect gold from any time period. Or, like Jackson said before, that it could be a descendant. Something passed down and taken care of versus something that has been sitting in a temple for hundreds of years. Oh, sure. I mean, you've got conquistador gold, Spanish gold, and then you've got, you know, um, a piece of gold you know, drinking ware from the 1700s that mm. they, you know, they purchased. They, they brought it in. It's not... Do you think that maybe the conquistador gold was when... Do you think maybe the men who, who contracted whatever disease they got tried to replace the gold with their own? Oh, like that, that gas bar? Yeah, like Hello? so so like if they, they, they said that they had taken something. Do you think like once they fell mm. ill and their beliefs oh, led absolutely, them to yeah. believe I mean But if they had already spent the gold they would have to use Ga- their own. Gaspar certainly in that in that letter, Gaspar certainly felt uh that he had wronged something. He mm-hmm. needed to atone for it. It could be a uh there's plenty of stories uh, so, you know folklore beliefs where uh, if you steal something that doesn't belong to you, you know, karma hmm. is a term for it. Uh, you need to return it. Or, you know, make amends. Can I ask the keeper, did I... Did everybody notice that um, that uh, Larkin was looking sickly? No, only Oliver did, but Dang. you mentioned it. Yeah, um, I mentioned that he looked like he was going through withdrawals. Okay, and I mean, the note said that everybody started looking sickly, right? Yeah. Mm. That and everyone emaciated. looked like I... they were on death door. Hmm. Okay, let's let's say I say that out loud. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they could be presuming this is some sort of death cult. If they are attempting to recruit Larkin in some way, this could be some sort of initiation, having him to go through the um, Karasiri sickness like rituals to make him a full-fledged member he needs to lure wealthy people into the temple you, that, I, mean, I, have, I have seen stranger things and I have certainly seen similar things in mm. some of my studies that would make sense I do think we should probably check um their hotel room before um in worst case scenario and monsters are real in case that creature comes back to life he probably knows where that um hotel room is yeah he we did kill his assistant i'd also say it's it feels unlikely to me that larkin wouldn't be aware of the nature of his assistant right and who knows if there's a possibility they may share it. That is very true. Uh, I will say I have no problem going and checking out De Mendoza's room, checking in on mm. Larkin, seeing what's going on there. Uh, I did give my gun to Professor Sanchez. Mm. So. I am... I think I'm going to take a break from snooping right now, so I need this back. And I take out my thirty-eight and I hand it to him. Ah. Thank you. And he takes it and he... It looks like it's never been used before. <laughs> he checks it like he has used them mm-hmm. plenty of times before. <laughs> yeah, something tells me it's going to be better in your hands Tucks it in mine. his waistband. I, I appreciate that. And trust me, I will return it. Um, that said, I'm going to... I, I could... Feeling a little better now. I could use some food. How about y'all? 
What, what time of day is it? Uh, at this point, it is mid afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to wait till it was darker out, you have a few more hours. Mm -hmm. um, so. Sure. Uh, essentially suggesting passing time with a meal, spending a little more time with uh, Jackson Elias, mm -hmm. chatting. Um, love, can I talk to you? Of course. And I'm going to take her and move to where we are unheard. Sure. Um, preferably like a corner. Yeah, you're able to move across the bar. It's, <sighs> it's busy for the time of day, so. <sighs> What's going on? I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I... It reminds me too much of what happened when I was little. Just strange markings, murders that are unsolved. Hmm. Do you think, potentially, these creatures could have a connection to what happened? Love, there aren't creatures. It's just a guy with a death cult. Like, come on. Oliver, my head was in its mouth. Respect that I know what reality is. Fine. Fine. I trust you. But are you really saying that that night was caused by something like that? Who knows? <laughs> no one knows anything. Even you, even in your doctor work, it's called a practice. Oh my god. I was there. I mean, granted, I was hiding in a closet, but I was there. Yeah. I don't know. I just... When I froze, I... I think it might have just been some trauma working through, but I thought back to it. It's almost immediately where my mind went. Absolutely. Um, Oliver, I'm sorry I didn't notice you freeze. It's fine. You had other things to worry about. Hmm. I know, but still, I apologize. And take your break. But you need to be prepared for the worst case, I think. You know what? I fucking hate it when you're right. <laughs> I'm more often than not, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you might not be blood related, but you sure fucking act like it. All right, let's go back. <laughs> All right. And I, uh, he like straightens everything out and like, I think love like helps him straighten his tie yeah. and just. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. You look like you, you're acting like mom. Don't say that. <laughs> and uh, she just turns and starts walking. <laughs> yeah, I'll walk with her. Um, for that conversation, um, those of you who are not at your maximum stability can regain two points. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks for the therapy, sis. Of course. <laughs> that, goes, that goes for everyone. Yeah, it's the, the, the drink, the, the good companionship, the heartwarming moment that you didn't witness, but happened. <laughs> what happened? I'm sure you can look over and see, like, love hugging Oliver at one point. And Oliver just, like, still to this day not being comfortable with being hugged. Just being like, pat, pat. Yep. Uh, but you were going to say. Was I? Yes. Uh, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> I apologize. Um, you were going to ask uh, Jackson Elias something. No, that was Tyler. Was going oh, it was you. I'm That's so possible. sorry. Uh, Jackson, we know where Mendoza was staying. You've got his room key. Yeah. Do we know where Larkin? Oh, like next door. Oh, yeah, they're they're both in the same hotel. Yeah. I think they have a joint, uh, con you know, conducted room. Then we should be quiet when searching. Oh, yeah. Also, I tried to snoop around there already, and the um, hotel owner is a feisty older Peruvian woman who threatened to call the cops on me. So we should definitely be cautious. It might be a bit suspicious if everyone goes up into one room. Oh, it's, it's a, it's a large enough hotel. I think, you know, do we want to make a distraction? I think I can possibly handle that. <laughs> uh, you know what? That might help. That might help. She def, she, uh, definitely, um, threatened me with violence, um, said if her husband was still around that he would teach me a stern lesson and threaten to call the cops. But I was um, a little too pushy with trying to get her to let me into their rooms. So <laughs> now I have a key. I don't have to ask. <laughs> yeah, but you still got to sneak past a very feisty Peruvian woman, which. It's true. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, so you eat, 
you rest a little bit. Uh, would anyone like to do anything else, or are you going to head towards Hotel Espana to check out their room and, um, I guess, cause a distraction? Yes, I'm mm-hmm. going to get my guns. <laughs> cause a I presume I brought on the, on the trip, just not with me. To, sure, sure. But yeah, so I'd like to get my guns. But other than that, no, let's do it. Okay, you swing by your hotel. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> grab your guns, grab anything else anyone else wants. I'm going to get a pair of flats. Fair. <laughs> I'm grabbing my med bag. Okay. So, like, um, I think Oliver's brought, I, I, like, while well, you brought, like, a billion suitcases, <laughs> Oliver has brought one suitcase and one briefcase, and that briefcase is full of all of his medication that he has brought, okay. all of his general first aid stuff, and some surgery supplies. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So you head out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hotel Espana. I poison. <laughs> I just assumed you had it on you at all times. No. Okay. Not all times. So you do. You grab some of the um, poisonous substances that you have yeah. with you. Okay. I love her so much. You head out. Hotel Espana is like so. If the bar Coronado where you met them previous night is here, mm-hmm. and your tel- hotel is here, Hotel Espana mm-hmm. is here. Like it's okay. equidistant, just in the other direction on a different, slightly different street. It's pretty close by. Cool. You get there. You um, see quiet lobby-ish. There's like one person sitting on a chair reading a newspaper. You see a, uh, a doorman. Um, there is a concierge at the desk. Uh, there's not an older Peruvian woman. Um, go ahead and everyone roll me a spot hidden to start with. What if you don't have? You, all, you, you always have a base rating. It's okay. 25. Um, which is 25. Thank you. Oof. Oh, oh, actually, mm. I think I just barely passed. Yeah, I did. Okay. 49 over 45. Okay, so close, but no. 37. Okay. 31 under 45. Okay. 42 under 45. <laughs> Seven under 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Love, you notice the uh, vacancy sign? On the desk. (gasps) And the rest of you notice a very short, gray-haired Peruvian woman sleeping in an armchair in the lobby. Or at least her eyes are closed. Hmm. (laughs) Do you tell anybody this information? Um, (laughs) Oh, yeah, I will. uh, Just under my breath, walking amongst all of you, I just go, Liar, and point towards the va- vacancy oh, uh, sign, shit. and then to the right, there's a sleeping woman. Um, do you think Larkin left? He might have left a day early well, to beat know. us there. I don't know why he would have done that. I think the vacancy was when he said the hotel was booked full. But he no. did. He did say that he booked us in a separate hotel because this one was full. Now uh, the so the building is. The building is two story, mm-hmm. um, very very nice, older, very authentic regional architecture. Um, best guess, depending on room size, is probably like a dozen rooms here. Mm. That little shit. We don't know. It could have just happened. Someone mm-hmm. could have just left. Um, well, I mean. We did create a vacancy in one of the rooms. Allegedly, he may not be. De- That's very true. That's we we've created a, as of now, temporary vacancy. What room is on that key card, or that key? Uh, he pulls the key out. It's got one of those little like plastic hanger type things. Um, in this case, it's actually wooden, um, and it says, uh, let's say, two twelve. Two twelve. I can go ask her if the room that's vacant is 212. I, I think it would be 212 or 211, because it would be the room next to him. Hmm. Or any other room. Well, why don't we... So, I believe we have the key. Mm-hmm. We can inspect the room. Um, and the problem is, well, we need a distraction so that um, we can search it undisturbed. So, why don't I handle the distraction down here? I'll do what I can. Um, while the rest of you begin your investigation. 
Is the vacancy is the, the vacancy sign hung up specifically near a room? Like, is it, it like? No. Do I see? Is there behind the desk? Is there like you know the boards where they hang up mm-hmm. the keys? Is the key that to that vacant room in a specific spot? You see four keys. That bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He no, just okay, didn't so, want us near him. So this woman, she said she's sleeping next to like the front desk, or, or and or she's anything? in a chair. There's like a there's a nice foyer. Okay. And mm-hmm. she's just in a, a relaxing armchair. Her eyes are closed. She's got a newspaper folded in her, a book folded in her lap. Okay. I'm going to, I'll walk up to, is there a bell on the front desk? Or? There is. Okay. Then I'll walk up to it and. Uh, before you do, oh. Jackson Elias actually is like, and he goes up the stairs. Oh. He's like, wait, give mm-hmm. me, but he doesn't want to be an eyesight of her when sure. she wakes up. Okay. And then, <laughs> now go ahead. Bing, bing. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Are you doing it loud and annoyingly or just? No, just charmingly, <sighs> just leaning on. I'm, I'm kind of taking in the whole place like it's like it's something wonderful and magical. And <laughs> You see the, the woman in the armchair stir. It's like she was lightly dozing. She's just like, hmm. oh, yes, hello. Can I help you? Good evening. I was hoping I could find um, the executor of this establishment, whoever whoever owns this place or runs it. Oh, I, I, am, a, I am the proprietor. She's, she has very good English. Okay. Um, and she says, how may I help you? Um, I'd like to pour on some charm. <laughs> can I Can I charm her? Go or for it. I not? Okay. Are you going to flirt with this old Peruvian lady? A little bit. Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes. All right, I'm going to try. That is a 15 under 61. <laughs> so. I'm gonna Wait, save. that's a quarter. Mm, it? Not quite. Shouldn't it be? No, it's yeah. twelve. Never mind. Why is that twelve? Because it's a, it's not a quarter. Oh, it's a fifth. Oh, it's, it's a fifth. A fifth. Yes, Never yes, mind. Yes. Uh, I right. can't math. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're the proprietor, really? I, I, I mean, someone who, some, how old is she? Oh, she's <laughs> in her seventies, probably. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, surely someone as lovely as you. I, I thought you were a. I thought you were a model <laughs> decorating to, to attract new customers. <laughs> She 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 chuckles and she says, "Ah, you're a flatterer, just like my uh, my late husband." Your late husband? I'm I'm so sorry. Ah, yes, Anhel passed these years, three years ago. I've I've been I've been running the hotel by myself ever since. That's you know, when you love a person so deeply that and and you work on something like this, that sort of love infuses a place. I I can feel it. There's there's something magical about this place, something wonderful. It's what I wanted to discuss with you, actually. I'm um oh. <laughs> I was gonna say as he's talking, yeah, I'm pushing really people matter. up the stairs <laughs> yeah. and I look at him from behind her and I go. I am gonna just kind of walla walla. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna let you go for a little bit more. Uh, absolutely. Uh, do the rest of you follow Oliver upstairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back to everyone going upstairs in a moment. Please continue. <laughs> it's why I was thinking. So, I'm sorry. My name is uh, Adrian. Adrian Beaumont. Um, I'm. Primarily work in coffee, but I've been looking to branch out, uh, and this seems like an investment worth taking. I, I've fallen in love with your city. I've fallen in love with with this place. It's like I said. It's there's a magic about it. Uh, I was hoping you could show me around, maybe help me figure out how one might uh, acquire what might also run um, a hotel such as this. Oh, I thank you, thank you. Uh, she just, she launches into, like, the story of the hotel and, like, keeping it up over the years, and we will fade there. (laughs) Upstairs. (laughs) (laughs) You all leave, go upstairs, uh, and you see Jackson Elias waiting. He's kind of sweet. He's got that thing where he's just swinging the key around on Mm -hmm. his finger, waiting. Um, he's like, finally, Jesus. He can hear her talking. We had to wait until, like, she was enraptured. Totally, totally understand. All right. Uh, so his room is right down the hallway. I walked down. I listened at the room next door. I didn't hear anything, but that doesn't mean that Larkin's not in there. Can I? The room next to it, that would be 211. Can I look at, Jackson, would this be? So hotel rules, it would be 214 or 210. Ah. Uh then can I can I whatever was next to it uh, the adjoining room? It is two ten. Okay, then can I look at two ten? And clearly the owner is not going to be home. 
Um, and this is the room that De Mendoza was staying in. Yeah. Two ten or two twelve. Two ten. Two twelve. Two twelve. Two twelve. Oh. It's the last. It's the last room at gotcha, the end. Gotcha. That's not okay. So I I misunderstood that like where Larkin. No, it's it's all good. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'm a little yeah. slow on where Larkin is. Um. Well, just, I'm not sure where he is. He might be in that room. He points at two ten. Yeah. Lovely. Um. Let's just open the door. It's fine. Okay. Everyone good. Mm-hmm. All right. He unlocks the door. I'm gonna to two twelve. He puts the key in the lock and then. I'm gonna do my own listen roll at two ten. Go ahead. Just to not take him at his word. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Seeing that, can I casually do it for two? Uh, the other one. Two twelve. Yeah. 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 You stop, Jackson, uh, Jackson Elias, before he opens the door. Yeah. Okay. Because he starts to put the key in the lock and then you're like, "Hold on." Yeah. When you uh, go to step up to that door, I'm like, "Hey, I have actually really good ears because I'm a trained singer." <laughs> So, it's a fifth success, eleven oh, under nice. sixty. Okay. Uh, you wait for a minute, and then you do hear some movement inside. I got a uh, half success for listen. You hear nothing in D Mendoza's room. I'm going to just casually, quietly motion to the group that there is someone. In there. Jackson Alas picks up on it, gives you that affirmative. And then being a little more cautious, unlocks mm-hmm. De Mendoza's room's door and slowly opens it. Can the room. I... Yes. Can I join uh, Nicholas by the other door? You're going to stay outside in the hallway? Mm-hmm. Okay. For right are, now. Are you also staying out in the hallway? With that score, yeah, I'm just going to, as soon as I, if I do hear rattling, I want to be able to communicate that to the group. Yeah, uh, so you want to see here, like, if, if he, you want to tr- be able to tell if he hears them. Correct. Okay. Ride that fifth success <laughs> until the end. <laughs> Let me know what you find. That's crazy. The room that he opens the door onto is impeccably neat. It... it it's there are no personal effects there are no toiletries there is no luggage there is no clothes the bed has not been slept in basically all you see is a dresser a bed a bathroom a door that presumably leads to a bathroom and a door that would lead into the adjoining room Hmm. This is going to sound weird to anyone who is not in the medical field. Do I smell anything weird? Roll spot hidden. Okay. I was about to say, there's no smell (laughs) check. Roll sniff. (laughs) Roll sniff. (laughs) For those of you still in the hallway, you do not hear any change or um, um, sign uh, that he has been disturbed in the other room. No. <laughs> 76. My spot hidden is 45. Yeah, it smells clean. Okay. So long as there's nothing like rotting that I smell. Either that or I've just gone nose blind. <laughs> <laughs> they, I pretend I'm whispering. This is weird. Um this it, it He's supposedly been here for days. There's no sign of this. Like, I trust housekeeping, but, like, not that much. I don't think he's been sleeping. Are you inside? No. Mm. Sorry. Adrian. I don't want uh, to interrupt your role play. Ophelia, you. would you like to do anything in the room? Oh, I'm... I, I presumed I was still downstairs distracted. Oh, you are still downstairs. <laughs> I am so sorry. It, I think it's only me and Ophelia in the room mm-hmm. and uh, Jackson. Yeah, I, am, I, I apologize. Ophelia, is there anything you would like to do in the room? No. Because it's clear, like, no one's okay. here. Can I? Jackson does walk in and start looking around. Mm-hmm. I was going to um, say I was going to. He, like, he actually, like, looks under the bed. Yeah. 
pops the door open to the bathroom. Did you want to look around? I, I that was my next move. Go ahead. Now roll. that I haven't like since d- since you are rolling for a different sense, go ahead and roll spot <laughs> Thank you. Again. Um, those of you still in the hallway, <laughs> uh, you hear him like have a little bit of a coughing fit, um, and like you hear like the bed creak as he gets up, and you hear him moving around a little bit. 36, under 45. When Jackson, like, kneels down and, like, is looking under the bed and he, like, braces himself against it, you notice the mattress is kind of askew. I tap Jackson on the... to get him out of the bed before I lift the mattress. When you lift the mattress, you see a golden mirror stuffed between the mattress and the bed frame. Yes, so it's a golden mirror. It's uh, mo- It's like gold that's been polished to a shine. It's not like a mirror with a golden frame. Okay. So it's um, it appears to be kind of a mask, um, but it's like six inches square. Mm. So it's not like it wouldn't completely cover your face. Um, it is gold. It is a stylized face made of like blocky geometric shapes. Um, no eye holes, and it's, um, the back of it has just been polished to a sheen, allowing it to be used as a mirror. That's effectively it. Okay. So, like, old-fashioned, kind of, like, obviously it's not Greek, but, like, how Mm -hmm. the, like, Mm -hmm. ancient Greeks used to do mirrors, which is, like, polished silver. Exactly. But it's gold. Hmm. Uh, Jackson Lass is just, like... I'm, I hold it up for him, like to. He just shrugs. He's like, mm. he he <laughs> gestures to you, like. Roll for. Uh, this so this would be um, appraise archaeology or history. Appraise or archaeology is preferred, but if you don't have them, I will allow you to roll history. I have appraise. Give me appraise. I have archaeology. You're doing Which a great job. <laughs> 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 I have seventy-two. It's awful. It, it's yeah. another. P, it's another gold artifact. Mm-hmm. Do you want to roll arch? Try rolling archaeology. I'll try rolling arch. I'll try to get under a thirty-six. Yeah. Never know. Yeah, sixty-six. No. Nope. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, nope. it's just it's another gold artifact. Yeah. Nothing odd about it, or nothing like distinguishing. Do we take it? The those of you in the hallway, <laughs> um, you hear him go to the bathroom. You hear a faucet turn, glass of water. You hear him walk back across the room. You hear the bed creak again. <laughs> so, do we just like go in? Or... At, at this point, I think we're good. Let's go join the others. Uh, yeah, and so you walk in as everyone's kind of looking at this golden mirror. Ooh. The rooms themselves, though, you said earlier that they were joined? Yeah, there's a door. Is there a lock on that door? You do see a lock. Is it currently locked? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Not from this side. Oh. Just going to keep eyes on that every now and then. You notice that Jackson Elias has also noticed that. He's right. like eyeballing the door like, hmm. Is there a chair in the room? Like just yeah. a normal chair? Yeah. Oliver will take the chair and push it up under the handle. He stops you because that will be loud. <laughs> it like you see like Oliver wants to slam it down, but he like very like it's like a kid that's not allowed to throw something, just like very silently but like very angrily puts it down. Um okay. eyes on that mirror. Yeah. Um is, are there any distinguishing marks on it? I mean it's it's any definitely old. Mm-hmm. There's no inscription. There's. It's just like it's a, like an old, like polished. It almost looks like it might be a mask. How big is it? Big. Like it. 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 Like it. When I say mask, not like one you would wear. Like mm-hmm. it's just kind of designed to kind of resemble a face, but mm-hmm. it's been polished to be a mirror mm-hmm. sort of thing. Do we take it? I mean, yes. Right. I mean, I don't want to get cursed, so. 
Um, who's been like really like staring at it, trying to figure it out? I mean, in the in in the event that I have to roll a, a stability roll, not me. I'm it's kidding. not. <laughs> I've I I have been trying. I haven't been like staring in it, but I have been. I actively avoid myself in mirrors for a multitude of reasons. But you've been inspecting yeah, the mask I've itself. I've been and so inspecting the mask. Mm-hmm. So mostly you two. Mm-hmm. Both of you make power rolls. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ooh! 47 under 55. I hate my life. 99. 99. Do you need me to sage those dice? Something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we will come back to the 99. Oh, no. Oh, God. Are you sure that's not 66? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> there no. should be a dot near. <laughs> yeah, it's nine. Oh, damn. Damn. Oliver. Mm-hmm. As you are, like, kind of trying to avoid looking at yourself, but really inspecting the mirror, you're suddenly overwhelmed. And you... You get flashes of another place. You see an ancient stepped pyramid sitting atop a plateau that suddenly bursts open with rocks flying as these greasy white tendrils start like writhing out of it with white maggots dripping from them. <laughs> and then a, there's a flash. And it changes. And you see... A train window. Scenery flashing by as the train speeds down. Um, with vistas of planes. Maybe Africa? Maybe somewhere in Asia. Uh, With a strong smell of that, you know, smoke from a coal engine. And then all of a sudden, there's just a sharp scream. And you come back to standing in the room. A bit dazed. Um. Uh. Give me a stability roll. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. God damn it. <laughs> Should have spoken more quickly. I know. <laughs> no, I was looking. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I. Ooh. Ooh, a 26. <laughs> Under. Under a 50. Hmm. You lose one. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Wait, wasn't this supposed to be? I was. No, I was supposed to roll over instability. It's under uh, my intelligence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, you're good. It's not bad. I'm just traumatized. <laughs> it's <at all. laughs> And uh, I believe you were holding the mirror. Yeah. Uh, you kind of snapped too. You're still, you're holding it. You are holding it like you were almost about to put it on. Um. And for the rest of you, Mere seconds went by. It was almost just like Oliver was lifting it up and holding it, like, to peer into the mirror. And when you come to Oliver, you are staring directly into your own reflection inside of it. Oh, I hate that. Um, someone take this. I'll take it. Ophelia. Yeah. Don't look at it. Yeah? When you rolled a 99, mm. that is a critical failure. Oh, God. <laughs> and you have been inspecting the mirror as well and you also get a vision oh my god but the vision you see is darkness as the sun in the sky turns black an inky darkness spreading out from the center of it and you see tentacles of darkness and shadow spreading across the sky, enveloping the earth. And I need you to roll a stability check. But the vision has not ended yet. Oh Oh my god. Get a snap out of it. (laughs) I'm not going to. 71. Jeez. 60. Yeah, I'm back to 60. Please bring those dice to play VTM. (laughs) That would be great. Five. Oh Ooh. no! 
and I will also need you to roll an intelligence check. Mm. And this is the one that you want to roll high on, so... Higher than what I have. Higher than your intelligence. Watch, I'm going to get like 20. Oh, whew, 71. <sighs> and what is your intelligence? 55. <laughs> that snaps you out of it. And you are stunned, but curious. Okay. But you also audibly gasp <laughs> very loudly. That's just a loud second. And those of you who are still listening hmm. hear the bed creak in the other room. Can I run? And you hear... Luis, are you back? Sneak out? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh, who has, uh, everyone, not counting Adrian, who has the lowest luck at the table uh, currently? I'm at 45. Oh, man. Where 30. Oh, no. 55. It would be up by your stability. Hey everyone, I decided to come upstairs with my 70 luck. <laughs> Let's hey just guys, see what's going what's on. Up? <laughs> oh, no, I want to know who has the lowest. Oh, lowest luck. Uh, 50. Okay. Oliver. No. Yeah. Did nice you give me a luck roll? <laughs> so under 30 or over 30? You want to roll under. No. No, <laughs> 75, in fact. As you are all moving to exit the room, the door to the adjoining room swings open. <laughs> And covered in sweat, eyes sunk in dark circles like he is just coming out of whatever addiction binge he has. Larkin stands there shakily, says, well, who, what are you doing? Why are you in? The Mendoza hadn't come back yet. And I think I like step in front of love so that he doesn't see the (laughs) mirror. And I, I go, De Mendoza wasn't back yet. We were worried about him, and we... so you broke into his. What is? His door was unlocked. And um, Oliver, can you roll a medicine check for me? Yes, sir. Uh, everyone else can roll spot hidden. Oh, cool. Ooh, nice. Oh my God! Can I push my luck? That was oh a sixty-three God. over sixty-one. Uh, yeah, you can push this one. Go ahead and roll again. Yeah, twenty-eight. Okay. That's uh, that's under half. He is. Clearly, uh, so you are more f- you are familiar with all sorts of drugs and mm-hmm. narcotics. Um, this man looks like he is coming down from off of heroin. Mm. For the rest of you, um, spot hidden rolls. Uh, Fourteen under twenty five. No good. I don't have spot hidden. So it's a twenty five. Oh. Is the target thirty one? That was. That's Closer? pretty close. That's pretty close. <laughs> uh, so you will you will notice so, a few things, um, but love mm-hmm. peering over um, Oliver or around Oliver because you are much shorter. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pretend sorry, we're swapped. The heights are reversed and it's throwing me off. <laughs> um, and around Larkin, uh, by contrast, this room is chaos. You see multiple suitcases with dirty clothes spilling out of them. You see personal effects all over, and a smell hits you Mm -hmm. after a moment. And you two will also notice the smell to a degree. It is sweat, Mm. stale, sick, and a certain what can only be described as rot. And it reminds you of that smell of the restaurant. But you're not by the docks anymore. Mm. And he looks at you. So you you broke into his We room? didn't what? break in. The door was open. We were worried. Oh. 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 Are you Do, okay? Yeah. I, I, I come forward with my medical pouch. And I take out, I'm going to say, some form of morphine. Um, and go... Can I give you something? You look like you're in pain. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Larkin, I'm just, I'm don't. confused. Why? Uh, 
and he turned he like he turns around and for those of you who saw him yesterday very well kept white linen suits mm. very different appearance this time around he like i said very sick very mm, not quite there there mm-hmm. um very pale dark circles under his eyes um and obviously sweating um he says no i i i suffer from mal- long term effects from malaria <sighs> ah and uh Sorry, it's just, you know, hard for me to explain it to everyone. No, it's understandable. He's um. wearing a, um, not sport coat, but like, you know, um, house coat, house mm-hmm. jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he gets confused a little bit when he's talking to you, it falls open. And all of you see this circular tattoo. On his chest. It's black and it's kind of a spiral radiating out from the center of his sternum. And it almost looks like a stylized um, person twisted mm-hmm. around. Uh. Um, it's hard to see though, because he, once he once he realizes that his like jacket has fallen open, he like closes it again. Can I make a medicine check? I don't think that these are consistent symptoms of malaria or long-term malaria. You already, you don't have to make the check. Yeah. They're not. He's lying. Um, right. Um, Larkin, professor, may I? He's may not I, a professor. No. The, Larkin, can I? I'm familiar. I did work with malaria. Would you like me to give you something? I have some antibiotics in my bag. It, they would help. Sure, yeah. That w- I would appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 100% give him a sleeping drop. I 100% make him give him something that will put him the like, fuck on the ground. He's like, oh. oh. It's not labeled. He's like, my but medicine he, he, jar's he, he, not yeah, labeled. He's like, he, he takes it and he's like, should I take it now? Should I, should I, be like, should I take it? The food? sooner the better. What's it might the... take a few minutes to kick in. Uh, and it, it just... He uh, so, he just drinks it. I, I take a little flask of water out and hand it to him. And if he needs to chase it down with something, he's not going to last that long. Not but <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, what, what was it that you gave him? I gave him a, um, so back in the 1920s, they used to make these draughts to help children go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, they were fraught with like morphine and mm-hmm. like yeah. mm-hmm. shit to, like, I mean, that will. frankly, they probably had heroin. Yeah, they, they yeah. probably had a little bit of chloroform as well. Um, <laughs> so it will make him go Night night. Yep. Like and real he takes fast. It and he's like, especially uh, since the thing that I gave him was the dose for three people. He takes it and he's like, "Well, I um, I appreciate you checking in on the room that I guess." And he's. I'm just over, looking at my watch. He hits the door frame and slides down it and is out. Ah, yeah. um, record. Briefly, Adrian. Yes. Um, <laughs> it has been a while. It has. And she has started retelling some stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you do you want to break away from this and rejoin your friends? Or? Have I have I heard anything from upstairs? No. I, yeah. I no. 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 You know, uh, <clears throat> ruckus. No. Yeah, it's kind of boring for the game if I'm just <laughs> talking, myself, talking to this old lady. Yes, so. this was my subtle way of doing it. <laughs> I don't Therefore, know. I'm pretty entertained. I'm just going to say, like you've, you know, you've you've given me so many beautiful stories, so much to to mull over. I'd I'd like to just walk these grounds and get a sense for this place more, oh, please, if that's please, okay with you. Please walk around. Take your. Take, Enjoy. And she she settles back in and opens her book and starts reading. Lovely. <laughs> Go up the steps. All right. And so you head upstairs. Yes. Uh, you nothing, ups- nothing better happened to her. You head upstairs. <laughs> uh, and I'll say you enter the room just as Larkin slumps over. Um, and now everyone's back together. Um, when he slumps, the jacket falls open. And the <laughs> and decent. <laughs> you do see this is a very rough tattoo. Um, it is a ragged spiral, com- almost completely covering his chest, ending at his diaphragm. 
and it appears to be this misshapen humanoid figure with large outstretched claws. Mm. And he is unconscious, and the rest of you see into the room, which I described before, and can enter it if you want to. Yeah, um, Oliver, like, looks down. He kind of checks for a pulse. Still makes, like, he's alive. It is faint. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's there. It's there. That's all I'm worried about. We'll, uh, it, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, I mean, I'd say this would knock him out for a full day, but... I mean, I saw a leech man almost bite my sister's face off, so I'm not going to make any assumptions about the anatomy of this thing. Um, y'all want to wanna go check the room? I'm going to stoop down and pick him up to the bed. Yeah. Just that way he'll sleep a little bit more comfortably. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to stay with him because I know the signs of people coming off of what is the 1920s version of anesthesia. Certainly. So I'm going to yeah. watch him. Love, you've got something. Don't. Look at it. Can I roll? Oh, uh, you've been staring into the mirror. Oh my god, love. Once he went out, uh, love took it out and was like, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Uh, can I roll? Has anyone rolled a cult on it yet? No. Can I roll a cult? Sure. Sick, 83 <laughs> out of 25. You you stare deeply into the mirror. Cool mirror. And I'm going to need to make a power roll now. <laughs> it is your occult roll. I was hoping, you were, nothing. was hoping you were saying six. <laughs> when you said sick. And you said, that's great. But no. Under 65. 65. Oh. Under. Was that no, a success or a failure? It's a failure. Okay. Can I push this? Can I give you a hint? Yes. You don't want to pass this. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, you okay. absolutely can. You <clears throat> want to fail. Mm. Um, okay. So you pick him up. Yep. He is frail. Mm. He is very light. Um, it, s- stating he has a sickness may not actually be entirely wrong, mm. unfortunately. Uh, although it's certainly not malaria. Um, and you put him in bed. When you put him in bed, you notice the sheets are stained. They're greasy. He's been sweating. Uh, and you also notice um, next to the bed is a small stoppered bottle of liquid with a syringe. And uh, you don't need to know Spanish to recognize the word heroin. I have a question. Because Oliver would know this, but Salem is blanking on mm-hmm. some medical knowledge. Heroin suppresses appetite, doesn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. That's cool. You so also I'll... notice uh, he did eat, mm-hmm. but you did not see him eat at the mm-hmm. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, had, he had been finishing a meal. Mm-hmm. So you don't know how big it was. You don't know what he actually ate. He had one of the waiters for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would have noticed. Uh, you also <clears throat> did not see D. Mendoza eat. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, I almost saw him eat my sister, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, uh, other than that, there is not really anything in this room. I, so when I have a moment, I know I don't want to interrupt uh, what's going on with the mirror, but I think when I have a moment, I'd like to use the sheets to tie this guy up. Sure. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to stop you, but I am going to make sure you do it in a way that if he wakes up, he's not going to kill himself. Sure. <laughs> that is fair. Okay. Can I roll a cult on a tattoo? Yes, you may. Because someone else was about to. <laughs> but I will let the players do that. What'd you get? Is that, yeah, 67 under 60. You want to push it? You can push it. Yes. Ooh, what, yes. Is that, what does that mean again? Uh, so you roll again. If you fail this time, there will be consequences. Please. <laughs> <laughs> 33. Yes. Oh. You pass. Oh, God, that's me. So you, you, you're standing there, um, and, like, while he's being restrained and everything, you're kind of inspecting the tattoo, and you're staring at it, and you think about it for a minute, and then you realize you may have seen this, or at least something similar before, in one of Jackson Elias's books. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we jump over to that section briefly so I can get the <laughs> list of books he wrote again. Sorry. 
So he wrote about the Black Power. Uh, so the the you think it may his most recent book, which came out this year, The Black Power, ha- talked about Asian and African death cults, and this symbol actually popped up in that book as one of many that may be related to other cults he did not get a chance to investigate. Okay. I you t- notice he's eyeballing the symbol too. He's like, hmm, that looks familiar to me. I bring that up to everyone as like a possibility of um, Larkin being in this death cult. And who said he might have been trying to draw people to the place with the gold? Did I? I think. I feel like we've all sort of come yeah. to that conclusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so I'm leaning toward that being true. And you tell everyone that. Mm-hmm. And you turn back and look, and Larkin's eyes are wide open. Oh! And pitch black. Awesome. Uh, um, like pitch black, like eyes dilated, or pit, like no, full like scalera. Like scalera. Full scalera. No, yeah. oh. I'm reaching my hand back to my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, and then I realize that Jackson has it, it, and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> and he looks up at you. Right. And in a very calm but commanding tone says release me. <laughs> can I roll for a cult? <laughs> you absolutely can. <laughs> release me. No. no. <laughs> and when he says that, obviously, everyone is like, wait, what? <laughs> he is mm-hmm. completely different mannerisms. Mm-hmm. He's sitting, he's laying straight, mm-hmm. shoulders back. Very, not stiff, but, uh, you know, uh, commanding, even from a laying position as mm-hmm. he is restrained. Um, which, 42 under 60. Um, possession. Yeah. Closest you can think. He's possessed. Yeah, that was what I was thinking yeah. anyway. Um, what do we do about possession? <laughs> I'm let's, uh, let's find out. I'm drawing, I'm going over to the bottle of heroin Mm -hmm. and I'm drawing some, I'm getting a clean needle because this one's been used (laughs) a billion times. Sure. I'm a doctor still. Um, And shush. Um, (laughs) And I I draw back a good few units and get the bubbles out. And while he is looking, preferably while he's looking at somewhere else, I nick him. Um, We'll say that takes you a moment. Yeah, go do your do your spooky things. Um, please, please release. Me. With my gun drawn, I'm going to say, "To whom are we speaking?" It's, it's not important right now. But, but trust, trust me when I say, releasing me. this vessel. Uh, he do, he's obviously not moving. Releasing this vessel will be in your best interest at this point. Yes. Can I take my poison and like try to shove it down his throat? <laughs> you can, uh, he's fully restrained. You can absolutely try to pour it down his throat. Do I have to roll for it? Uh, he will close his mouth. So yes, <laughs> it will be a fighting brawl roll. Larkin, <laughs> just Oliver with the heroin, just yeah. the needle. And you be like, turn around just as Ophelia is about to just like don't kill my bottle. patient. <laughs> I don't like this. Thank you, dice. No, it's <laughs> ninety five. Oh. So you you uncork the bottle. Mm-hmm. And you try to quickly like shove it in his mouth and pour it in, mm-hmm. and he clamps his mouth closed before he does, and unfortunately, you dump the bottle out all over his face and the pillow, so oh. it is empty now. Mm-hmm. And Oliver, you turn around with the syringe to see this. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know what I expected. Stabby stab. And you inject the heroin into. Uh, yeah. Okay. If that's what was he was doing to self medicate, I assume I'm making a logic, like a leap in logic that it will. Bring Larkin back, whatever Larkin is, from whatever the fuck this is. The minute you do, the eyes snap to you. Mm-hmm. 
roll stability. Oh, fuck. Mm. As something <laughs> pierces your soul in the look. Mm. And you have that little mm-hmm. bit of a flashback again. Mm-mm, mm-mm. 83. Mm-mm. Heads or tails? Tails. You lose two. <sighs> I take um. a pillow and put it over his face. <laughs> nope. Not to smother him, but just to break eye contact. <laughs> Wait. Mm. I wouldn't do that. No. Mm. I don't know mm. what it does. It's a mirror that scared mm. all of you. Maybe it'll scare him. It didn't just scare me, it gave me visions. Me too. Possession? Mm-hmm. Perhaps it showing it himself. I'm going to take five steps that away. While you're debating, (laughs) the eyes drift close. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what was, what was that? Um, possession? It looks like? Yeah, I'm. He was definitely possessed by something. Yeah, I, I You mean, don't know, it, he didn't communicate what, you don't, you are familiar with uh, possession in a general sense. Um, there are plenty of things that could mm-hmm. possess someone, and you don't know what this was yeah. in particular. So I'm looking between both Ophelia and uh, Jackson. I'm saying... He's, he seems in shock okay. a little bit. So where where did it come from? And how do we send it back? I don't, I don't know. You you both seem to to recognize this this symbol on his chest. What, do you know what this is? When I was researching uh, some of the death cults in Africa for my last book, uh, this symbol popped up a lot. Um, Mm. But even even the cultists that I interrogated you know, interrogate is a bad word that I infiltrated and kind of like got information about they seemed afraid of it. That's mm. all I ever learned. The note. It's it said, um, Mendoza, right? Mm-hmm. He was like, he went bananas. And he said this being or whatever was like compelling him to go back to the cave or whatever. Mm. Wouldn't that be the same thing that we just talked to? That that would make sense. Yeah. Maybe it's a, some sort of. Uh, yeah. And you can see Jackson trying to rationalize it now. He's like some yeah. sort of hypnotic suggestion or. I Jackson. mean, it makes sense. I, he, what do we do now, though? I don't Leave. No. Take the mirror to the cave. He's tied up. If anyone asks, we were stopping an addict from taking an overdose of heroin. How much did you just give him? Not enough to kill him, but enough to knock him out. Well, what was in the sleeping drought? Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of chloroform. So I I don't know that leaving him here is, it, it appears, whatever is going on with Larkin, he's been attempting to keep this at bay. It with, with, seems like he's been fighting this. Hmm. It, right. It's it, heroin. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but it suppresses appetite. And if mm. look, I'm beyond the oh. point of trying to rationalize this. That that the the, the the that transcription from Gaspar's note talked about them being endlessly hungry, yes. insatiable. Mm. I, I'm beyond trying to rationalize this with science. A leech thing tried to eat my sister's face. I looked at a mirror and saw maggot tentacles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm kind of smiling and nodding at this point. Um, so, if this man is one of the cursed conquistadors somehow, or descended from him, or whatever, or cursed the same way. Well, I don't know if like I I did some research. Larkin is like a known figure. But if he took... But if Demondoza was... Do you... Cor- yeah. Do you think it's like... Uh, you said they were like vampires. Do you think if one bit one, it would... Would pass turn, on to another? Yeah. Like a... Like a... Like a bloodborne illness. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Theorizing that's true, we left 
Trinidad with. Shit. Oh, no. He turned around and runs. Yeah, I'm following. Yeah. <laughs> Are we. Do we put do it we in my bag? Him here? <laughs> Are we bringing him with us? No, leave him. But, if he's anything like the others, he's beyond saving. But I'm going to stay with Larkin. The purpose for that is I can do a little bit of just basic first aid just to make sure he doesn't OD. Should we <sighs> do you want me to stay? Him? No, I'll, I'll take care of that. But you know, like, you are familiar with first aid sure. and those things. So if you want to stay behind, we'll allow that, obviously. And the rest of you run off after Jackson Elias. I don't yeah. like that he's staying alone. You want to stay with him? I can stay. Be safe. I'm staying here. Okay. There's a front desk lady. We can say he over D or That's whatever true. you said. We can send medical help Actual in. medical? Yeah. yeah. I... Hey. <laughs> Wait, who? Did Jackson say that? I didn't know. As opposed to <laughs> him. Uh, <laughs> Wait a <you>. minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine, and I'll pull out the gun that I you have. You do have a weapon, okay. No. I also don't want to be at the scene of the crime where this was, and I'll put that back. Mm, that's also a fair point. Mm, that is fair. Um, go, okay, run, we, we be have safe. To, we have to go. Okay, so you head out. Yes. Okay. Mm, before yes. we leave, yes. I'm going to throw you one more bottle of that sleeping draft. Okay. Mm. And you run back to the museo <laughs> museum. I'm not the museum of archaeology and anthropology. Um, museum, yeah. You arrive. It's night. The offices are closed. Jackson says, "I know where. I know where his house is." Should, I would like to go check on my friend. Yes, no, <laughs> understand. Okay, um, okay, here, c- come with me, come with me. Um, and he leads you more deep into Lima. Um, down some streets around. It takes you, like, a little while to get there. But he does arrive at um, <clears throat> Professor Sanchez's house. Uh, pounds on the door, pounds on the door for a minute. And then the door yanks open. He's like, guess what? Okay. You look like you have seen a ghost. What is wrong? Kinda. <sighs> it's been a long day, Professor. It appears there are worse things than ghosts out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, the police had many questions. Um, quick question for anything happens. Um, did you or anyone get bit? I mean, Trinidad. Trinidad. But yeah. I, I was. Uh, Where is she? At the morgue. You wanna you wanna walk and talk? I I mean I my I am spending the evening with my wife. I, That's very nice. She might not be dead. <sighs> Let me get my coat. Goes inside, grabs his coat, comes back out. <clears throat> sorry. Didn't mean it. I'm sure lovely night. I'm so sorry. That's fine. I, I, emergency. I had a very long day after the now that he's outside and away from his family, he's like, after dealing with the police, I had to dispose of Mendoza's body. It was mm. a hassle. Understandable. Um, I don't think any of us want to prolong your involvement in, if you don't want to, but we're trying to keep this from getting any bigger. Certainly. Um <sighs> Did you did you find anything after you left? What what happened? Um, <clears throat> we found some evidence that whatever it was that happened to Mendoza can be passed to victims. And we're afraid it may have happened to Trinidad. I mean, I, I have heard stories that the Karasiri are able to make more, but it you know there's there's the rumors about them are the so few. I didn't think it would be you know. A frequent, easy as uh, attack. I, there have been reports of attacks plenty of times, but you know, not there are not great numbers of them. Hmm. Right. What if they make something akin to? Have you read Bram Stoker's Dracula? Uh, no, I have not. First off, great read. You should. Second of all, in the book, um, Dracula has 
issues making more because everything he makes turns into a ghoul, not a vampire. What if it's like that? What if he's making ghouls mm. instead of full-blown creatures? Halfway. They're not controllable. They don't have a thought. They're like Demandoza. Interesting. Conversation continues, mm. and you arrive at the hospital. Um, he, he says, hello, I, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, I would... I." wanted to collect I realized that I had left some um, Trinidad had some personal effects I want to return them to her family blah 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 they're like I thought you it's a different person so they don't realize that he had already done that sort of thing um, and he manages to talk, talk his way into the morgue um, and at that point ja that's when Jackson Elias turns to the morgue attendant and slips them <laughs> a twenty dollar <laughs> US bill and says <laughs> Uh, if you can just give us a, a moment, and they step out and leave you alone. Leaving you alone. Um, they haven't even performed an autopsy yet, uh, so the body is still covered, not in storage sort of deal. Um, do you want me to? Uh, you are you are the doctor, no? Please. Yeah, uh, let's go with that. Um, I I wash my hands. I will put gloves on um, for my sake more than for hers. Sure. And very professionally, I will begin examining her body. Okay. Uh, I will save you time and roll. She's very dead. Y yeah. I'm wondering if anything has changed since nope. last I inspected her. Hmm. Okay. Um, I want to... <clears throat> Excuse me. The last thing last because I didn't do this last time. I check her reflexes? Sure. Uh, this is a corpse that has been dead for several hours. Yeah. Just make... I mean, I just saw somebody, like, come up from my special sleepy time mixture in, like, two minutes. So <laughs> nothing's beyond the shadow of belief for me right now. Um, but, yeah, no, I, sure, I, sure. I check her reflexes. I open her I open her airway. I check her eyes. Yep, no. Like I okay. said, I'm going to save I, you time in a roll. I, I'd rather be sure then sure. leave something unchecked and mm -hmm. have someone potentially get attacked. While you're doing that, um, Jackson Elias has pulled uh, Professor Sanchez away a little bit to give more for his sake than mm -hmm. privacy. Um, so anyone who would want to linger with them can. He mm -hmm. says, what did you do with D. Mendoza's body? Ah, um, we have a garbage truck mm. that comes regularly. I simply put it in with the pickup. Oh. Um, question for the keeper. Did we see a, a tattoo on Mendoza? You did not. Okay. Uh, he was fully clothed, though. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Could I look around to see if there are more victims of the the car Siri? Uh, do you want to go through records, or do you are you gonna just like open? Go through records. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a library use roll, um, Ophelia. I know that is something you are quite skilled <laughs> in. If you would like to assist. Are the dice going in jail? No. <laughs> Quite opposite. Ooh. I think I'm stealing all of your luck tonight. Yeah. I have none, so I mean. Oh, I threw them out of my thing. I rolled a one. <gasps> Ooh. I rolled a 91. <gasps> <laughs> um, <laughs> as you flip through, you notice uh, there is one oh. from several nights ago. Uh, it's very similar. Um, a bite mark. They were found in a back alley. Um, it was. It's a just a random like restaurant worker type thing. No, no, no one specific. Uh, no one of note to you. It's uh, not the waiter. It's not the waiter. <laughs> I, I was like, I wanted to be like, it was a waiter, and then I was like, you're gonna get the wrong idea. <laughs> um, no, it was just uh, and similar. 
circumstances uh, okay. found in similar condition, which is what's important. Um, yeah. But not mm-hmm. – and you noticed after the fact, now that you're thinking about it, when you saw Di Mendoza at the restaurant, at the bar, gaunt, mm-hmm. very thin, very hungry looking – when you fought him, very full, very, <laughs> very fleshed out, meaty, um, well fed looking. Oh. Same frame, but still a thin man. But there was a noticeable difference. So it seems like if he doesn't feed for a while, he gets more gaunt and hungry looking. And when he feeds, he looks very full. So it. It would appear as if he's only fed once in the past few week or so that he's been in Lima. I will pass that on to everyone else in the morgue, that he looks like he is starving himself, potentially. Oh, shit. Probably to avoid notice, you would mm-hmm. guess. Giving you... that was a That's a critical success. You're getting a <laughs> yeah. lot of information here. Less to be a good person. Um, They're afraid of being found out. They're more afraid of us than we are of them. I don't know about that. I'm pretty fucking scared of them right now. I tackled one. Upstairs. I ever tell you you're my hero? (laughs) I need to tell you that more. I don't know. A couple times. (laughs) But for real, I... I do not think we need to be as afraid as we are of these things. Of course, be afraid, but... If... And she moves her hands up and down. If I can take one down, it can't be that hard. There has to be a reason. There's only, like, a handful of them. Or, or maybe there's uh, more to you than meets the eye, Jackson Elias says. Oh, there's definitely that. I don't know. I think, I think I'm think i a pretty straightforward person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I and, think I finished an A. Yeah. Uh, any, okay. Anything? No, she's... Unfortunately, still dead. Well, um, but there's no signs. In this yes, there's no signs that she's had a little midnight snack. There's there's no signs that she's moved. <clears throat> the rigor mortis has set in and it hasn't budged. Uh, Professor Sanchez nods, like sadly, but Jackson Elias seems relieved. <sighs> Unfortunately, for me. This will affect my ability to... Well, no. Professor, you... You think you had found the location of the... The, the ruins, right? Mm. Well, yes, it was in the... in Turnedad was doing research. He had found a letter of Gaspar's, and he says, we, um, we may have found that. Um, I think... I, I don't know about y- y'all, but I'm... I'm still interested in investigating these ruins. I want to see where this leads to. Yeah, I... I feel like we have no choice now. It, it's our only option. I would be a shit doctor if I let people continue getting hurt. Do you, uh, do you want to see this through, Professor? Mm. And he says, no, I, this, is, this was enough excitement for me. Thank you. Uh, well, I, he says... Uh, Jackson Lai says, let's uh, go check in on Larkin again and collect our friend. And I say wait for the trucks to arrive Monday and take them. They've already been paid for. I mean, if Larkin's nowhere to be found, we can always say that he chickened out. He handed the operation over to you. I'd be fine with that. Lovely. Let's go get Shall we? muscle. Okay. While this is happening, hmm. Larkin does eventually calm. You notice that for a while, still very stiff, hmm. very rigid. Eventually, you see like the breath release and his body like, kind of slumped down more into a deeper slumber. Um, but he remains asleep the entire time. Okay. Uh, typical to my profession i'm going to give him some decency change him out of his clothes that are a little soiled yeah look around for some if there are any cleaner 
linens. You find uh, not the linens, but uh, cleaner clothes for him at least. Okay. Um, you're able to you do you do what you do and clean him up a little bit. You get him comfortable. Um, do you leave him restrained? I do not. No. Okay, so you untie the sheets that uh, Adrian used to tie him up. Yeah. Okay. Once I see that the if it the change in behavior. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he does not waken. So I'm going to rifle through, see if there's any, he mentioned a map. He mentioned mental notes, mm -hmm. seeing if we have to pick up an investigation, what all we could gather on our own if we didn't have him. Sure. You don't find anything else in the room except for those two gold artifacts. Okay. Do you take them? I do. Uh, the whole time just muttering to myself, what's your deal? What's what's really going on here? I don't quite get it. Huh. That's it. Okay. Do you, do you stay until they return or do you head back to your hotel eventually? I'll stay until they return. Okay. Um, then you, you all return to the hotel, find basically what I just described. Um, and Larkin fast asleep. Jackson Elias <sighs> kind of looks over him like, hmm. So no issues. Uh, I think when he comes to, we give him a note to recover story, say Mende Mendoza went ahead, we need him at the site. Just Do we want Larkin with us? I doubt I that. I think he's, he's a bit of a liability, no? Took the words out of my mouth. I would agree. Doesn't that note say the thing that was possessed or the person that was possessed wanted desperately to get back to that place? If something is being possessed and they want to do something, usually in the, the stories I read, you aren't supposed to let them have that thing. My line of thought is if we have Larkin and I look over to his feeble, still drenched, soaking body. Yeah. If we have him under tow, mm -hmm. if we know where he is, that's a lot better than him ambushing us, well, whatever that thing is. Is there not a reason that we can't that we can't talk to Larkin? Mm -hmm. I mean, the the jig is up at this moment. We we know that he's deceived us, and I don't see a reason why we can't tell him we know he's deceived us. Mm -hmm. It seems like he's trying to keep whatever is going on with him on at bay. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps he'd want for us to know so we can help him relieve himself of this this curse, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. My only concern is that uh, whatever happened with him earlier when he had that bit of a change mm -hmm. yeah. happens again when we are less able to handle it. Handle I only have so much mm -hmm. of this sleeping draught. Um, question. Uh, Mr. Lias. The ruins that we're going to, is it, is it a stacked pyramid, like a stone pyramid? I, I don't know. I haven't been there. I, I can, I mean, I asked around when I went, when I went down to Puno, I asked around, um, the locals mostly avoid it. They get bad feelings in that area. I saw something. Plus they're afraid of the Carter Siri. I mean, I am too at this point. Uh. I saw something mm -hmm. in the mirror that I looked at, which, by the way, don't look in the mirror. Um, it was some sort of creature emerging from a pyramid of some kind. And it didn't look ancient, but it looked old. It was horrifying, if I'm honest. I... This might sound cruel. What if we just report any points at Larkin to the cops? I mean, to be he'll fair. He'll be taken care of. Yeah. And he'll be out of our hair, and we can go investigate this in our own way. I vote we kill him. I like the Whoa. police idea, actually. <laughs> Whatever spoke through him said he was a vessel. Right? 
So what if we, you're not wrong? We do not want this thing to get more vessels or whatever the case is. So if we leave Larkin alive and he goes to the cops or whatever the case is and he turns or whatever and turns more people or whatever the case is, we can't risk that. We need to just kill him. But, but keeping that, we can't guarantee that if we kill him, that entity doesn't just find another vessel. Maybe a stronger, more powerful one. Maybe killing him releases it. Yeah. Mm-mm. Keeping him locked in a cage that is weak for him is, I think, knowing, like 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 what Nicholas said, is knowing where he is, knowing where it is, I think is a little better than freeing it or not knowing where it is. Now, unfortunately, I see I see both sides of this. Mm-hmm. So let's do this. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go back to my hotel room. I'm going to make preparations to go, and I'm going to let you all make this decision. If you want him to go to the cops, let me know. I'll call them. I... I don't feel comfortable killing a man, but I understand the reasoning behind it. I don't ever tell you you're an asshole. I've heard it a few times. Yeah, they're right. You should listen to them. So what are we doing? I won't kill this man. I won't either. I have a third idea. We could cut off the tattoo. Why? Why? I mean, no one else is having issues like him, and he's the only one with that mark. Every, you recognized the mark, and you recognized the mark. As I did. He, as he's he he stops when you say all this. He's like, <laughs> so it's idea. C- clearly tied to some sort of mark. If we remove the mark, it may keep it tethered. It may keep it tethered to the body that it's attached to, without needing to be with the body. Or. Or it could release it again, right? I think it's tied to the gold, and I don't think it can be released unless whoever gets possessed goes back to the cave and listens to that creature. Yeah, I definitely am in agreement that we should not let him near the site. Mm. But I kind of agree with love. I know I can do that. I don't know if it'll help. But I don't, other than maiming a man, I don't see how it can hurt. I mean, it would probably keep him alive. Maybe before we get to that option, we could revisit back to Adrian's plan of just confronting him, gathering as much info as we can, figuring out what all cards we're playing with, and then go to maiming. My own concern is that he doesn't have any more information. He's got or he won't tell us. A, mm, either one of them. Because whatever he is a vessel for, if, like I said, if that comes back and he's not drugged and restrained, who knows what that thing can do. This is the first time also you've seen him just fully acknowledge that there's something else going on here. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I refuse to kill this man. I can't. Well, so my suggestion was to get him some help. I think... If we think that that is not a good idea, what if we just tie him up again and leave him here? I mean, the hotel staff would eventually check on him. And as far as they know, it's a heroin addict that almost overdosed. Yep. I would be fine with that option. I'm okay with that. Me too. Then we're in agreement? Yes. Yeah, I'll end. I'll help. Right. And uh, maybe we should untie him first. Already. He's already untied. Okay. Yeah. Jackson okay. Elias' suggestion was tying him up again. Oh. <laughs> um, then or, maybe tie him by leave one hand free. That way it looks like he did it instead mm. of someone else coming in because then that raises suspicion and puts the police on our tail. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just his feet. You could always give front desk owner a heads up 
it's, it's a complaint about the smell. Mm. It, it fucking is, reeks in there. Yeah. Okay. So you deal with it and leave Larkin mm-hmm. in his room. You do have another day before these trucks are supposed to arrive. Is there anything you would like to do? Sleep. Can I take a mental health day to recover some (laughs) some stability? So let's talk about that briefly. So if you would like to try to recover stability, there are a number of ways you can do so. You, if you are religious, you can pray, you can visit your institution of choice and um, do it that way. You can see a shrink. Psychology is in its early days in the 1920s, but you can have psychoanalysis done and recover it that way. You Or you can just have a peaceful moment, a wholesome moment like we just happened last time, where you just feel a little more like yourself and a little more at peace. And that will recover a little bit. If you would like to take a day, do the things that help you feel stable, that will recover... A moderate amount. By moderate, I mean like probably up to five total. Mm-hmm. You've lost quite a bit. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I keep understand doing why dumb do things. So if you would like to take the Sunday mm. to rest, do things that help you feel stable. Yeah. In reality, you may do that. We'll give everyone some recovery time, and then Monday morning comes, and you will meet Jackson Elias to head to Punia. So mm. it's gonna sound weird. But I think Oliver goes to the hospital to hang to like help out in the emergency room. Doesn't sound weird at all. Yeah, because that is his happy place. Yep. He knows how to help people. There's a right, there's a wrong, there's no yep. crazy eldritch monsters. There's a person with a bad knee that needs a brace. Yeah. You go, you help. Maybe it's a maybe it's a clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, somewhere where people can't necessarily afford to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, Favorite kind of patients. And we'll say you spend your Sunday doing that and I'll be generous. Mm. You recover four. Hey. I'll take it. I will take it. 51. Let's go. Uh, let's quickly go around. Sure. Um, Nicholas, what, would you, what do you spend the Sunday doing? I'm going to stock up in at least one bullet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also look for supplies, whether it's camping, whether it's ammo, sure. whatever we need. I will say Jackson Elias lets you know that uh, the trucks are supposed to have supplies with them, but and also you can resupply in Puno, um, but right. if there's anything specific you want, yeah. you can pick it up. Okay, just general wears and dares. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I stay in my room and like pour over my books and refresh myself on um, like the lore uh, that I know of this part of the world and like mm. other parts of the world um it calms me <laughs> it feels right and um i pick up more of like my poisons that i have in my room and like knives and stuff okay so more esoteric but that type of stuff okay yeah uh i'm going to reread through a bunch of my book um which i keep forgetting the name the curse of Capistrano, Mm -hmm. um, which is the first appearance of Zorro, so everyone knows. Um, I'm going to read it and then just kind of like look in the mirror and I'm actually going to undo my bow tie and stare at myself for a while. Uh, You know what? I'm actually going to, I'm not going to do this on camera. (laughs) (laughs) I'll actually take off the shirt and then he'll uh, he'll actually start doing like a, a solo capoeira rota. Okay. It's just kind of focusing, but you know, doing. Yeah, no, and that would be that would be very stabilizing for you as well. Mm-hmm. Something you're very familiar with. So let's give you, uh, let's say two. Cool. Stability back. I'm back at max. <laughs> all the way up to thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> so you can. That's not your total max. You can go higher than thirty five. Oh, okay. Eventually. This is where you're starting. Did yeah. I gain any or not? Not yet. Okay. I'm coming back to you too because okay. you two did more like shopping stuff. Okay. Love. Uh, if we have not turned him over yet, mm-hmm. if we're waiting until the next day to turn him over, uh, Love is going to just disappear and go to him and take care of him while he's alone in his room. Um, and she just sits there quietly. It's the first time that she sits quietly the entire trip. Okay. Good night. 
six. Oh, oh damn. Man. <laughs> I was already at full. (laughs) I'm just well adjusted. Uh, So you you two spend your days. Yeah, you can you can go up higher. You have a mat. You have a starting number, and then you have a max. Oh. Um, For Adrian, Ophelia, and Nicholas, um, who didn't spend your entire day doing what you mentioned, I will say you you all gain an additional two stability. Thank you. Just for spending a quiet day away from every. Thing that has been going on. Mm-hmm. Monday morning arrives. Mm. 8 a.m. You meet Jackson Elias out front of Hotel Espana, which is quiet. Not much going on there. Uh, there are three transit trucks, uh, basically like lo- extended cab style, like for for a modern term. Um, trucks ready, with, packed with some supplies, ready for the three-day journey mm. south to Lake Titicaca and Puno. Okay. Before we head off, I do go back to the bar and get that gold back. Okay, so that's uh, probably swing by there on Sunday. Yeah. While Thanks. you were doing things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Can I add a flavor to that? Yeah. Uh, when you're leaving the bar, you think you see love uh, standing around a corner. Watching you. Mm. <laughs> but then it's just a lady. That, no. No. <laughs> it's probably just that waiter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is the first time that Oliver's ever been like early to something that wasn't like school. Mm-hmm. That he's like actually, he looks a bit disheveled. I don't think he's as dressed well as he normally is so he looks a little off um and but he's there he his dark circles have gotten darker somehow but he's he's there i think he gets there at like 7 30 and he's like this sucks this sucks he's like drinking coffee <laughs> he's like this sucks but i couldn't sleep all right you can climb in the trucks and you head off <sighs> The journey to Puno is relatively uneventful. Mm. Uh, it does take you a few days to get there. Uh, and I will show you the route that you take <laughs> to get there. So, I'll pass this around. You'll see there is a red dotted line that starts in Lima. Mm-hmm. And heads kind of down and around along the coast and then back up to Puno. And then you can ignore where it continues on to a second location for now. <laughs> That'll come up later. Don't secondary. worry about it. You mean there's a secondary location? <laughs> <laughs> Never go to Never a secondary go there. location. Quick, where's my clip? money clip? <laughs> Thank you. While we're traveling. Yes. Do we get any heebie-jeebies from the the truck drivers, the locals that are with us? No, okay. not at all. Hmm. They're pretty friendly. Um, it's a pretty relaxing trip just due to being able to sit back, enjoy the scenery. Peru is gorgeous. Um, I will say, however, on the third leg of the trip, the third day that you're traveling, um, as you are on the last leg, you are traveling higher and higher because you are actually heading up into the foothills of the Andes. I will actually need everyone to roll a con check. Mm. Oh, fuck. Oh, mm-hmm. f- fuck. <laughs> oh. Fuck. Yay. You missed the rest of it. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, 63 out of 55. Hold on. Oh. Well, yeah, easier for me to go on. Sorry. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, 87 over 55. Okay. 27 under 35. Nice. 12 under 55. Whew. 63 Just over 55. 94 <laughs> over 35. Oh, there it is. We are not doing great. <laughs> so those of you who failed do feel the... Early effects of altitude sickness hit you. As you t- it takes you 
merely a day to travel from the coast at sea level up nearly 12,000 feet towards the border of Peru and Bolivia where Puno sits. Mm -hmm. It is rough, but uh, Jackson Elias notices the sickness and the illness hit you and recommends chewing cocoa leaves. To relieve it. You know what? I immediately take him up on that offer. And it helps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Helps quite a bit. All right. Let's and on the morning second. of the fourth day, you arrive in Punya. And that is where we're going to end session two. Thank you all for joining us. Check out chat to see who the winner of both our Eldritch uh, Eldritch Foundry gift card giveaway and our Norse Foundry <laughs> dice giveaway are. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and we'll be back next week for session three, where the players can dig a little deeper into the mysteries of the Car Siri and the ruins. Have a good night. <laughs>